Hello all, this is James Johnson, aka Software Blade, and I am here with a brand new game called The Political Process. Um, this game, granted, is it's not much to look at, um, it, but it seems to be a spreadsheet simulator revolving around politics. And that's an interesting topic, if not a divisive topic, if not a topic that could be very, well, <coughs> controversial. So, you could totally expect that I'm going to say things that are controversial just to make it entertaining. At the same time, I could be that much of an asshole. But we don't know, because do you really know me, or do you think you know me? But you're going to find out a lot more about me as you watch the political process, and I actually govern scary thought and try to put right the world because I'm one of the best people for that job James Johnson president 2020 now nah, seriously though um, I am possibly going to say things that might offend some of you that is the world we live in everyone gets offended very easily so if you are a Democrat <clears throat> if you are a left-leaning individual if you identify with feminism, if you identify with social justice warfare, if you are from Hollywood, you probably don't want to watch my video. In fact, my video is probably not made for you. So just tune out now. <clears throat> if you're a kid, you shouldn't be watching my video because my video is made for adults. Please tune out now. Now, with that all out of the way, I have created a character here. This handsome-looking individual shall be James Johnson, since this is the James Johnson channel, and I'm James Johnson, so that that character right there will put age 24, he's a member of the Republican Party. The grand old party. I already went through all this appearance stuff um, to make this guy look the way he does. And now we have policies. <clears throat> so this is the very beginning of the game. You create a character, now you select some policies. And we're going to do that together so that you can get to know who I am even more. And you can hit that like button or you can hit that dislike button because that guy's a real jackass. <clears throat> anyway. Policies represent your position on every type of political issue. They're used during the election campaigns and tell the voters where you stand on each and every issue. If the voters disagree with your policies, they will be less likely to vote for you. Imagine that. Policies can be changed at any time during an election campaign from the Policy tab in the Election Campaign menu. So I can change my mind about policies, whatever the heck I want. I could flip-flop on policies, perhaps a special interest might give me a lot of money to support their policy that I could use for my next campaign. Instead of doing what I really think I should do, but you know, fattening the wallet is important too. Or would I do that? I don't know. Let's, let's keep watching. Do you support the minimum wage? Why do I support raising the minimum wage? I, I left out an important word there. Yes, I, I actually do support raising minimum wage. I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea. Do you believe that government aid to the poor does more good or more harm in terms of helping the poor raise themselves out of poverty? So, I have a selection for more good or a selection for more harm. Sadly, there is no in-between option. So I'm going to have to go with the one that is most fitting my ideals, which is going to be more harm. So I do believe that some government aid for people who've lost their job unexpectedly can use to get themselves back up on their feet 
in a timely manner. We're talking like a month to three months. Anything more than that? Not really, because then you're just living off, as my Australian friends say, you're living off the dole. <clears throat> and I'm not for living off the dole. I'm for using the government aid, like unemployment, for the purpose of what it's designed to do, to keep a person with a roof over their head and food in their stomach long enough between jobs to transition from one job to the next. That's that's what unemployment's for, and that's what I believe in. Anything other than that, it does more harm than good. The tax policy. Do you want to increase, decrease, or maintain current tax rates from low-income individuals? Um, you know, everyone is going to have to do their fair share if this great country of ours, the United States, is ever going to get out of debt, which is not going to happen in my lifetime or yours. But uh, maybe if four or five presidents in a row work to lower the actual deficit, it might be possible, but seeing as the last five presidents have not actually managed to pay down the deficit at all, I don't think it's possible at this point. I think we're just too far in debt. But <clears throat> with that being said, decreasing tax rates for low-income people is certainly not going to help that issue. Um, and increasing tax rates on low-income individuals is not a good idea either. So I'm just going to maintain said tax policy because, yeah, we're already here. People are already figuring out how to maintain, so let's go with that. Do you want to increase, decrease, or maintain current tax rates for middle-income individuals? So, the middle-income, those, those are the people who uh, aren't poor, but they're not wealthy either. They're, they're somewhere in between. They're, they're, they're the people who are, you know able to go see a movie every now and then, who are able to get their kids some clothes and maybe buy a house. And sadly, they make up the primary uh, bulk of taxpayers. So, even though this is not very Republican of me, I'm actually going to say I am uh I'm okay with increasing taxes on middle income Americans. The shock, the awe. What kind of Republican am I? Okay, do you want to increase, decrease or maintain current tax rates for upper income individuals? Now, the the optimum word here is upper income individuals. That makes me think that this is not a corporation, this is not a business, this is an individual. So if you are an upper income individual, you are a lucky person. And I would typically say I'm all for increasing taxes on these lucky people. However, what we don't have here is what their current tax rates are. And if this game is doing its due diligence and it is properly reflecting the current state of US politics, the current tax rate for upper income individuals is absurdly high. Um, and it's not really fair to raise it any higher than it already is. So I'm gonna go with maintain. And now you guys are like, yep, he's a Republican, no doubt about it. <clears throat> okay, in order to improve the economy, do you think it's better to raise taxes and increase spending or lower taxes and decrease spending? So, sadly, there's an option missing here. In order to improve the economy, we need to raise taxes and decrease spending 
But that option is not here. The options are to raise taxes and increase spending or lower taxes and decrease spending. So decrease spending is really the most important part of this four-way puzzle as far as I'm concerned. The government needs to spend less money. That is of the four things, raising taxes, lowering taxes, increasing spending or decreasing spending, there's no doubt about it, we need to decrease spending. So I'm going to go with lower taxes and decrease spending because the decreased spending portion of this four-way puzzle is most important in my book. Even though I have not decreased taxes in my tax policy at all. Do you support or oppose a flat tax rate on income so that all income levels pay the same percentage of their income in taxes? Honestly, I do support that very much, totally, for that. Um, it's only fair. Gun policy. Do you support or oppose background checks when purchasing guns? Oh, boy. <clears throat> we're, 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 we're running out into the weeds on this one. Um... Many who are not from the United States would probably easily say, obviously, it's fine to do a background check when purchasing guns. But here in the U.S., we have the right to bear arms, as is part of our Constitution. Or not Constitution, but, you know, our basic rights. Um, so with that being said, there are a lot of guns that already exist and are out there. Uh, that are passed down from father to son, mother to daughter. I don't, I don't want to show favoritism here for any particular gender, so, you know, that could happen. <coughs> um, and in these situations, background checks tend to not happen. And should they happen? I don't know. If, if you're buying a gun at the store for the first time, I don't see why, I, I don't see a background check being that big of a deal. But if you're, if you're inheriting guns from a parent and or uh, a relative, well, that's a little different. So, I wish, again, there was another option here. I, I support background checks on purchases of new firearms and I oppose background checks on already existing firearms. So which one of those do I want to support the most? Do I want to support doing background checks on brand new guns or do I want to support not doing background checks on currently existing guns for families? I'm going to go with oppose. Do you support or oppose stricter gun control laws? I think they're strict enough. I oppose. Do you support or oppose banning high-capacity magazine clips for guns? Okay, so high-capacity magazine clips, like banana clips or, you know, anything that can support a lot of rounds, is indicative of a firearm that's going to fire a lot of rounds quickly, like a assault rifle, in which case I would support it. However, you can also get high capacity magazines for things like 22s, which are for varmint hunting, for shooting squirrels and things like that. And I certainly don't have an issue with a high capacity round for 
a firearm that's actually used for hunting purposes. So, here again, we have no additional options, so I'm going to go with Oppose for now. I can bend if the law seems realistic to bend on, but at this point in time I will oppose. Do you support or oppose banning the sale of assault weapons? I do support that, yes. Do you support or oppose deadly force stand your ground laws? I don't think people should be keeping uh, guns in their house for the purposes of self-defense. That drives me crazy. That's not the use of a gun. A gun is a tool for hunting or maybe other things that you can use it as a tool for, be it clearing a limb off a tree so you get better satellite reception or whatever, but there's there's other ways to use a gun as a tool besides just hunting. Now, using it for self-defense, I think, is a bad purpose in the civilian world. Um, it's one thing for the military to use guns for defending the country, but another thing for civilians to use guns for defending themselves. However, if the criminals, the criminals will be able to get a gun, so why shouldn't civilians have a gun to, to defend themselves with? And if they are honestly defending themselves, then... By God, why not? So, I'm going to have to support the use of deadly force to defend themselves with a firearm. But only under the correct circumstances. That it's for honest to God self defense from someone else with a firearm that's shooting at them. Not for Joe Blow trying to run at them with a baseball bat. You know, that's, that's a different level of force. You can, you know, use your gun in other ways to stop somebody cha coming at you with a baseball bat. You know, shoot them in the foot. Or, or shoot them in the arm. Or just fire a warning shot. The person will probably decide, you know, maybe I don't want to try to take on a guy with a gun with a baseball bat. So, you know, deadly force is in... Circum certain circumstances where it's warranted. So I'm going to go with support on this position. Education policy. Do you support or oppose free community college? I oppose free community college. Free community college is something that, well, you should pay for. If you need to go to college for the whatever you're deciding that you're going to pursue as a career, then that's, you know, you need to invest into your said career. Um, it's not up to the government to educate you for your said career. I mean, you might decide that you want to become a a makeup artist. And the town you live in might be completely flooded with makeup artists. In fact, the entire county might be flooded with makeup artists, and there's no realistic possibility that you're actually going to make money as a makeup artist, but yet the government is going to pay for your makeup artist uh, venture so that you can then not ever pay them back because you're going to go broke because you picked a poor thing to chase after? No. That's that's what you wanted to do, so it comes out of your pocketbook, not the government. <clears throat> Alright, do you support or oppose free preschool for all eligible children? Ah, <sighs> preschool. Preschool is kind of like free daycare, if you will. It's, it's, it's a place where you can send your children while you're working and they're not necessarily learning, but they are. Preschool does prepare you to 
go into kindergarten and learn. So from the process that it's free childcare in a world where childcare is really expensive and because of the purposes that it does actually prepare the child for going into kindergarten and learning, then I'm all for it. Yeah, Let, let's go with preschool. Um, the government, you know, in most parts we need to trim down the government, but uh, in this circumstance that alleviates one of the burdens on families, and that's child, um, that's daycare responsibilities. Do you support or oppose increasing the salary of public school teachers? <laughs> okay, so school teachers are definitely kind of like the most important people in our in our country. They are the people that shape and mind the. They shape the minds of the young Americans, and they create Americans that could possibly make the country a better place. With that being said, everyone always supports the teachers because how can you not? They're the people that shape the minds of the of of future adults. So teachers always get support, no matter if they deserve it or not. I come from a family of many teachers, and what I do know about all of the teachers in my family is that they are all well-off, minimum wage individuals that make an ample amount of money and get like, what is it, two or three months a year in which they don't even work? or don't have to work but are still paid so uh, teaching is really a nice job that already pays quite well and if we were to raise the salary for public school teachers more than they already have that's just more money that the government's spending and so no I oppose actually uh, the raising school teacher salaries as I think they actually have an ample salary. They're one of the few people in this country that currently have an ample salary. Immigration policy. Do you support or oppose a path to citizenship for illegal immigrants who meet certain requirements such as no criminal record? I oppose. If you're an illegal immigrant, you are in the country illegally, and therefore I do not support your path to citizenship. Period. Do you support or oppose tightening security at the U.S.-Mexico border? You know what? Build the wall. I support it. <clears throat> Do you support or oppose expanding the number of short-term visas for immigrants whose job skills are needed in the United States? Certainly, I support it. The U.S. needs the, that job and they're skilled and they're going to help the U.S. economy? Why not? Let's, let's, let's bring in even more doctors from India, please. All right, miscellaneous policy. Do you support or oppose requiring food companies to label genetically modified crops? I support, yes, you, we should know what we're eating. I'm for that, even though it's going to raise the cost of the food. But that is not government's problem that is the provider of the food so if they're using genetically modified crops they're making more money right but at the same time if they're making more money they they can label it as such they can spend some of that more money they're making on the labeling of the goods so yes i support it social policy do you support or oppose reducing the 
income gap between the rich and the poor. Reducing the income gap between the rich and the poor. Mm, no, I, I oppose reducing the income gap between the rich and the poor because that is not what government's for. We are not here to say Johnny only makes 10000 and Donald over there makes $3 billion. It's not fair. Wah, wah, wah. We need to figure out a way to get Johnny more money and take money away from Donald. No. Donald made his money however he made it, and Johnny, he sat on his ass all on his own accord. So, no, I, I oppose uh, trying to do such silly things. Do you support or oppose the legalization of same-sex marriage? I oppose the legalization of same-sex marriage because marriage is a term for the church. I am fine with same-sex unions in government, but same-sex marriage I oppose. Do you support or oppose providing the same government benefits to same-sex married couples as are provided to heterosexual married couples? I support it on the fact that the same-sex couple is in a union and not a marriage. So as long as it's government recognized, then I will support it, yes. Do you support or oppose making the recreational use of cannabis marijuana legal? Why is it illegal? Seriously. You can get drunk off of our ass and crash a car into a telephone pole, or you can get high and eat a bunch of brownies and not crash your car into a telephone pole. Um, either way, they both have some sort of effect on the human body, and either way, they can be done safely if the adult is being, um, I don't know, adult about his, his drinking and or smoking uh recreation obviously i don't think you should go drive around a racetrack while you're high on marijuana just like i don't think you should drive around a racetrack if you're drunk off your ass either so yes i support uh recreational use of can cannabis I'm, I'm for that do you support or oppose making all abortions illegal I oppose that by the letter of the sentence. Do you support making all abortions illegal? Yes, I oppose making all abortions illegal. Regarding abortion, are you pro-choice or pro-life? I am pro-life. So... There are some circumstances where I think abortion should be fine. However, the concept of choice is not something I completely agree with. <clears throat> Do you support or oppose defunding reproductive health programs that perform abortions even if the funding provided is not used toward abortions? Do you support or oppose taking money away from reproductive health programs that perform abortions even if the funding provided is not used towards abortions? How can I support or oppose that when I don't know what the money is being used for? If it's not being used for abortions, 
but it's going to a program that does abortions. I need more information here. So I oppose on the condition that I'm not being given all of the facts of what that money is being used for. Perhaps if it's being used for uh, education on ways on alt on alternative uh on alternatives to abortion then I might support that you know if, if we want to tell people about how to give up their child for adoption or or any of the other numerous avenues that they could take and educate them on those avenues and if that money went towards that I'd be for it but I don't know what the, that money is being used for so I have to be opposed to it because I don't know what the money is being used for do you support or oppose cutting food stamps to reduce the federal deficit? So, <sighs> paying down the deficit is certainly important, but making our citizens starve in order to do it doesn't quite sit well with me. So, I oppose the cutting of food stamps to pay down the federal deficit. Do you support or oppose the Social Security program which provides monthly payments to retirees? Oh boy, here we are in the weeds. So Social Security is the number one reason in which, uh, uh, the number one reason that the US is in the financial crisis that we're in. we can't afford to pay our social security uh, responsibilities because politicians previously dipped into social security for things that did not involve social security so we have a company complete and total clusterfuck that is Social Security. I think Social Security is a great program to be honest if people don't dip into the cookie jar to pay for things that they're not supposed to be paying for. So if we can put in appropriate checks and balances and rules to ensure that that funds that are put into the Social Security program for the purposes of Social Security are not withdrawn for anything other than Social Security, I am all for continuing support of it. But if we continue to uh, take money from the Social Security cookie jar for other purposes, then I do not support it. So, I'm going to put support here for now. Energy policy. Do you think there should be more, less, or equal emphasis on producing solar energy? I think solar energy is great. In fact, there probably should be more emphasis on it. Do you think there should be more or equal emphasis on producing wind energy? I think wind energy is great too. So more more emphasis on on alternative ways of producing energy. I'm all for it. Do you think there should be more or less or equal emphasis on producing natural gas energy? More you think there should be more or less or equal emphasis on producing oil energy? <sighs> less. Yes, I'm a Republican, and I said that we need to start figuring out a way to get ourselves off of oil dependency. 
You think there should be more, less, or equal emphasis on producing nuclear energy? More. Uh, nuclear energy is one of the cleanest, safest forms of energy there is. Everyone's scared about Chernobyl, but the smarter we become, the more we use nuclear energy, the better we are going to get at it. Chernobyl and things like that happened when us, as humanity, was still relatively inexperienced with dealing with nuclear energy. So, it doesn't make sense to stop using a battery because you stuck your tongue on it and you got shocked. Keep using the battery, just don't stick it to your tongue anymore. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm for nuclear energy. Do you think there should be more, less, or equal emphasis on producing coal energy? There should obviously be less emphasis on coal energy. Yes, coal energy can be less pollutant. There are ways to make coal energy plants cleaner than they currently are, but no matter what you do, they are still going to pollute. So with that being said, we need to find a way to get away from coal energy, not continue to use coal for energy. Environmental policy. When it comes to environmental policy, which should take priority? Preservation of the environment or growth of the economy, i.e. stricter pollution regulations to protect the environment versus eliminating pollution regulations to spur economic growth. I believe with economy comes science that the private sector is the most likely sector that's going to solve our environmental crises. So global warming, we have no fix for that. We can all stick our heads in the sand or we can all scream at the top of our lungs. No matter which thing we do, we're not fixing it. Every car can stop driving tomorrow. We can turn off every coal plant tomorrow. We can completely go back to the Stone Ages tomorrow. It's not going to fix anything. So until we can figure out how to fix it, there's no reason for us to all stick our heads in the sand. So I, indeed prioritize economy over environment because if anything is going to save humanity it is progress better science etc that we're not gonna figure out by going backwards which option best describes the cause of global warming humans are the cause nature is the case global warming does not exist well, it's both. Nature has been warming up for eons. That is a well-known fact. Humans have helped to speed up that process. So I need to be able to click humans and nature because they are both responsible for global warming. But I can't click that and does not exist says that it does not exist but global warming does exist I I am not a global warming uh, denier I am a global warming um, realist humans have have, sh have uh, made their mark on it and so is nature I don't know what to click here I'm gonna click nature because I think the human equation part of it is a little overhyped for drama. Do you support or oppose limiting the amount of greenhouse gases emitted by power plants? I most certainly support limiting any emissions from power plants. Absolutely. Do you support or oppose implementing policies to combat global 
climate change. I support implementing policies to combat global climate change. So let's not let's not uh, confuse the issue here. If we can do something that will credibly help combat global climate change, then we should do it. The problem is it has to be realistic. We can't just park every car and decide not to drive them anymore. That's not realistic. Do you support or oppose mandatory controls on carbon dioxide emissions and other greenhouse gases? Obviously, I do support it. Do you support or oppose spending more money on the development of solar and wind technology? I support it, yes. Do you support or oppose spending federal money to develop alternate sources of fuel for automobiles? <sighs> federal money, huh? I do not... I oppose using federal money to develop alternative sources of fuel for automobiles. Um, I wish there was an option here to say that I support giving tax credits or tax breaks to industry that spends their money on developing alternative sources of fuel for automobiles. But that's not here. Do you support or oppose permitting federal government land to be used for oil exploration? <sighs> okay, so there's more to the oil uh, dynamic than making gasoline. There's more to the oil dynamic than global warming. There's more to the oil dynamic than industry. Yes, I do support uh, federal government land used for oil exploration. If we find huge vast quantities of oil in a federal forest then we should be tapping into that. Why? Why is that important? Because the oil reserves are for the defense of the country. We can't operate the jets, the aircraft carriers, the submarines, all the hardware that the military uses to defend this country because we don't have any oil, then we're not going to be able to properly defend the country. And what that means is to have a reserve, to have excess oil sitting in a stockpile in case a war drags on for 40, 50, 60, 70 years, we need to be ready. So yes, I, I support uh, permitting federal government lands to be used for oil exploration. Do you support or oppose increasing auto emission standards for automobiles? I oppose increasing auto emission standards for automobiles because auto emission standards are already strict enough. Do you support or oppose policies to reduce U.S. carbon emissions? All right, so this is kind of a, a loaded uh, one here, because what policy? Sure, I support a policy that will reduce U.S. carbon emissions if it's viable. Again, it needs to be viable. So for the purposes of, for now, I will check that I support it. But if it's not viable, I will oppose it. Military policy. Do you want to increase, decrease, or maintain current military spending levels? As much of a Republican as I am, and even though I am retired military, I do not believe we need to increase our military spending. We already outspend every country in the world and then some. I 
don't think we should maintain either, because we already outspend every country in the world and then some. If we're ever going to fix our budget crisis, we need to decrease our spending on the military. But we need to do so in practical manners. Uh, decreasing the military is definitely something that would be on my priority list, but doing so in a in a viable, smart, and sane way to minimize the effect on the defensive capability of the country is what would need to happen. Health policy. Do you support or oppose a single-payer universal health care program? I most definitely oppose. Government should not be in the business of taking care of health care. We're already in the business of taking care of enough stuff. We don't need to screw up health care. Um, when government gets into it, government gets bigger. When government gets bigger, government needs money. We need to tax more people. Government is too big. We need to decrease government. Creating a universal health care program managed by the federal government is not decreasing government. So I most definitely oppose. <clears throat> Do you support or oppose an expanded Medicaid program providing more low-wage workers with access to Medicaid? I oppose. Okay, the the reason I oppose is because programs like Medicaid and and their ilk, be it government based or commercial based, are part of the problem with medical prices in general. Um, the reason nobody can afford a doctor is several different reasons. One, one of the main reasons is because doctors get sued. They get uh, sued f for stupid reasons. So malpractice is a serious problem that raises medical costs. Another problem is uh, the stupid prices for pills. Um, because insurance or the government or whatever pays for medical, you can, you know, charge $10 for an aspirin pill while you're laying there at the hospital. Who in their right mind would spend $10 for an aspirin tablet. Nobody. But when you're in the hospital, you can do that because, hey, business is trying to make money off of off of the medical industry. And that is, those are all the problems. The medical industry needs to become more free market. It needs to become more competitive. It needs to have less malpractice suits. It needs to have less insurance companies. It needs to have less government regulated uh, regulation in general. So I oppose expanded medical programs providing more low-wage workers with access to Medicaid for all of those reasons. If we're ever going to bring down uh, the cost of, of, of medical care in the U.S., it needs to be done at a level that's actually going to make an impact. And having government give money to people so they can afford their health care is not fixing the problem. It's putting a Band-Aid and, and not fixing the problem. It's, it's like, oh, you can't afford your health care? Well, here. Here's some money. You can pay for it. 
and we're going to ignore the fact that that person shouldn't have had to pay that much money for his health care. All right, now there's a button to calculate ideology. Cool. I like this. I like that it gave me this huge list of different topics. And it and now I get to calculate my ideology to see what the computer or the game says my political ideologies are. This ought to be interesting. Fiscal ideology moderate. Social ideology moderate. I'm a moderate. You know what? I agree. I've always thought I was a moderate. Well, actually, that's an interesting story. So when I was young, I always thought I was a moderate. Currently, I think I'm a crazy uh, conservative Republican because that's basically who I identify with these days. But when I was young, I always considered myself more of a moderate, someone in the center that was between the Democrats and the Republicans. But the Democrats over the years have basically shoved me further and further into the Republican Party to make me feel like I'm an ultra-conservative Republican because I think Democrats are a bunch of lunatics. Oh, did I say that? Didn't mean to offend you out there, or did I? All right, what's this advanced option? Savings, starting position. Okay, I don't want to have a starting position. I want to have to to run for my very first office um, from the get-go. Uh, maybe I could give myself a little bit of money. Like, maybe I have about, I don't know. That's a good number, $1,879 in my bank account. So I'm, I'm not a completely poor schmuck. I, I have about $1,879 in savings. Uh, so yeah, a 24-year-old might have been able to save that amount of money, especially if he's worthy of running for office, if he's worthy to take on the pursuits of becoming a politician and governing uh, for people than a 24-year-old that has managed to save $1,879 seems realistic, actually. All right, so now we're going to press continue and see where the game goes from here. Starting location. Select a state. Ooh. Um, I'm going to select the state of Wisconsin. Um, so then we're going to continue. Huh, how about the county of Taylor? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good county there. 62% support for Republicans. That should help me get elected. We're, we're going to go with, with Taylor. What's price? Price is 51% Republican for it. You know what? That's a little bit more support for Democrats. It's barely over the majority for Republicans. I'm going to go with price, I think, just for the it'll be a tougher election type thing. Yeah, I want to give myself a little bit of a challenge. I don't want to make my election totally easy, so we're, we'll, we'll go with Price County. City name. Well, if we're in Price County, I guess we're going to have to be Phillips. Select starting year. All right, 2015. All right, uh, Congressional District 7, State Senate District 25, State House District 74, City Council District, School Board District, 
I guess, what, continue? Select a chief of staff. Woo! Welcome to the game. The first task in your political career will to be a, will be to appoint a chief of staff. I see a problem here. I have Laura Roberts, age 22, Sharish Mucharin, age 25, or Miranda Greenwood age 38. They're all female. I'm sorry, I, I want I want a male chief of staff. This this is a problem. Did I say that for the kicks of it? Or am I being serious? Alright, I'm only 24, right? Um... So let's go with the 25-year-old. Uh, maybe, maybe I went to school with her, and I know that she's got a good head on her shoulders, and she was the right candidate for the job. Not just I didn't hire her just because she was female. All right. Hi, I'm your chief of staff, um, Sharice. Yeah, we'll just go with Sharice. I will be helping you navigate your political career. I want to start off by saying that your political goals are up to you. There are no victory conditions in this game. You can do whatever you want. You can run for political office at the city, state, or federal level from the mayor of a small town to the president of the entire country. As an elected official, you can adjust tax rates or reduce government expenditures. You can write legislation that will affect millions of people. You can ascend the political hierarchy, gain influence, become the party leader, and shape your party's political agenda. You can take charge of your party's campaign committee, influence your party's platform, recruit political candidates, and help party members win elections. You can all do all of this and much more. The choice is yours. With so many options, you may feel a little overwhelmed about where to start. My recommendation is that you start at the city level, or as either a school board member, or a city council member, or chairperson of your political party's campaign committee. All of them are good introductions to the world of politics. The school board and city council positions will allow you to run for election write legislation, and influence the budget. If you play as the chairperson of your party's campaign committee, you will be in charge of recruiting party candidates, selecting the party platform, and using party resources to influence local elections. This option is good if you are interested in election campaigns, but not interested in writing legislation. Whatever path you choose, I'm confident that you will be a great politician. You know, I'm confident of that too. I'm starting to like you, Cherise. Also, I highly encourage you take a look at the concepts page, which provides detailed information about all the major aspects of the game. You could view the concepts page by clicking on the concepts button below my portrait. In the office summary tab, that is. You may also want to familiarize yourself with all of the tabs and menus in the game before applying for your first job. I think that's all I need to cover for right now. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Good luck and welcome to the political process. Dun dun dun. All right, here we are. We're we're in the game. Um and this is probably a good spot to end the episode, put a cut in the this Let's Play series. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of episode one of the political process. I know it was a lot of me rambling about my political ideologies, but what the heck did you expect? This is a game called The Political Process. Did you think I was not going to give my fair share and my two cents of what I think about things? Of course... 
you knew I was going to do that because you're one of my subscribers and, and and you've watched my other videos. You know exactly who I am. I'm I am James Johnson aka Software Blade and this is my content. Hopefully you're enjoying it. If so, please leave a like and subscribe. And until the next time all, peace.